Good morning. My name is Christine Villago, Country Manager of Grameen Foundation in the Philippines. Before we begin, we wish to provide some housekeeping reminders for everyone. The webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand to all participants. During the session, we would love to hear from you. So if you have questions or feedback during the presentation, please type them in a, the question and answer chat box below, and we will address them during the question and answer portion. As we wait for others to join our session, may I invite you to watch this short impact video on our program. This captures some of the stories of our beneficiaries and partners. Printia, kindly show our impact video. Natakot po kami nung nalaman namin magkano po, magka-quarantine. Kasi patigil po lahat po. Natakot po kami, saan po kami kukuha ng pangkain namin. Mahirap talaga. Kasi unang-una na walang ng trabaho yung asawa ko. Yung mga anak ko, hindi na naging regular. Yung dating buhay na, na kasanayan namin, nawala lahat yun. Ang laki talaga ang pinagbago. certificate will be sent to your beneficiary mobile number in the Philippines and can be used to buy groceries at selected ultra mega store branch in Metro Manila. Nung matanggap ko talaga yung text, nagtatalang talaga ako sa tuha. <laughs> Sobrang saya ko po talaga. Excited na po talaga, hindi makatulog. Ang akong napalit, nagigang sa Grameen Foundation na ayuda, buga, sudan, kaning kape, mga noodles, o nagpalit sa ko para manskin o money para sa akong gamay nga negosyo. Nakuha ko pong relief na mula sa granin. Yun po ang pinang-start ko na magbukas ng tindahan. Maski maliit man, eh, nakakatulong din po. Kasi doon na rin po ako kumuha ng pang-maintenance ko. Kaya malaking pasalamat po ako at biniyayaan kami ng ganun. Talaking halaga. Salamat na usa ko sa napilian para makapil ni ning maong modular learning. Ang ako mga nahibaw-an labi na sa among mentor, unsaon namo pagpaagi, panahon sa crisis or sa mga pandemic nga kalit mo abot sa atong kinabuhi. Usa sab sa akong nahibaw-an, unsaon ako pag-access sa akong mga suki aron ako mapaabot kanila nga nagpadayon ako sa akong negosyo. Yung Grameen Foundation is a big help for them. Tinutulungan ng Rafi family na maipasok yung business nila through online or magkapasok sila sa digital platform. Masarap maging mentor, masarap maging leader. Malaking pasalamat din sa ayudang, uh, pero ganun din po dun sa training na naibaba sa uh, Masaya ako para sa side ko na uh, although hindi ako yung mismo nagbigay, pero naging isa ako sa instrumento para magkaroon sila ng uh, panibagong pag-asa kasi hindi naman maliit na bagay yung binigay ng Grammy. So yun, dun po nagsimula yung mga panibagong uh, simula nila, panibagong pangalaman.
I hope you enjoyed seeing the faces and hearing directly from our partners and beneficiaries. Thank you everyone for attending our knowledge sharing event entitled Building Resilient Microenterprises, Grameen's COVID-19 Relief Program. We are joined today by participants from the civil society, academe, local government, private sector, as well as international and local partners. We've prepared an exciting lineup of speakers, starting with Emilia Kuklevitz, Regional Director of Latin America and Asia of Grameen Foundation, Mr. Carlos Mendoza, Senior Country Officer and Head of Banking of JP Morgan Philippines, Ms. Joni Joy Dumasig, Client Retention and Engagement Head of Rafi Microfinance, and Ms. Desiree Goto, Plans and Programs Department Head of Ahon Sahirap Incorporated. So before we begin, I'd like to invite our speakers to show and open their um, cameras so that we can have one shot with everybody in the team. Okay, thank you very much. And to officially begin our session, may I invite Amelia Kukovic, Grameen's Regional Director for Latin America and Asia, to provide our welcome note. Amelia, you may now take the floor. Thank you so much, Christine. Pleasure to have everyone here this morning. Good morning to all of you, and thank you so much for joining us for this important event where we're so happy to share the results from this important project. I'd like to thank JP Morgan, when the pandemic crisis called, they responded quickly, helping the most vulnerable with this project. JPM has been a longtime partner through our agent network work, network work, as well as our work in India. And while the crisis isn't over, we look forward to a strengthened relationship. I'd like to thank our implementing partners, Ashi, Ms. Mercia Bad, President, and Ms. Estrella Andres, Vice President, from Rafi Microfinance, thank you to the Chief Operating Officer, Jonar Dorado, Eileen Lim, Head of Operations, and our technology partners, Beam and Go, Celo, and Engage Spark, who made these crucial transfers possible. I'd also like to recognize our local authorities from the Philippines, the Department of Trade and Industries, partners at the ILO, Comonix, USAID, the American Bar Association, and Partners of America. Thank you all for joining us today. So if I could take a moment to speak a little bit about Grameen on our next slide, um, to let you know about our three programmatic areas and the solutions that we see as we're always trying and, and striving for an integrated approach. We see these digital financial services as a key way to make sure that the most vulnerable have the access that they need. We're also focused on digital innovation and in agriculture, supporting them with the advice and digital connection and also providing much necessary health financing and access. All of our programming is focused on being gender aware or gender transformative as we focus very much on women. We're, fo we're very fortunate to have multiple partnerships in the Philippines that make all of this possible. And we're always looking to be sustainable and scalable. Next slide, please. At Grameen, our mission is to empower people, especially women, and we see the world without poverty and hunger. We believe that the poor, the poor have the strength and the willpower. The only thing that they're missing is opportunity. So as you can see here, our approach is very focused on people and technology. We're looking, we're using human-centered design to develop um, and unleash their capacity, whether it's as community agents using digital financial services or digital financing tools. We appreciate everybody's support in our mission and helping us achieve this goal of a world without poverty and hunger. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Carlos Mendoza, Senior Country Officer and Head of Banking at JP Morgan in the Philippines. Thank you, Mr. Mendoza. Thank you, Amelia. Uh, the, the intro is first this morning, and I hope all of you can hear me well. Um, Amelia Kuklovic, uh, Regional Director of the Grameen Foundation. Uh, Christine Violago, uh, the Country Manager of the Grameen Foundation. Uh, acknowledging Mercy Salas, President of Ahon Sahirap Incorporated. Uh, Jonar Dorado, 
uh, Chief Operating Officer of Rafi Microfinance. Uh, our technology partners, uh, Celo, Beam and Go, and Engage Spark. Uh, representatives from local government agencies and industry associations. My colleagues from JP Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you all for joining us at this event. I, I do know that you are all you are all key stakeholders and proponents of public-private efforts focused on helping those most impacted by this global pandemic to recover and rebuild. Thus, your presence and active engagement here today you know, is critical to the work that our dedicated partners in this endeavor look to accomplish in implementing our COVID-19 relief program. It's a very cleverly named program. So the response to enhanced livelihoods of individual entrepreneurs and families. Uh, and this is across Metro Manila and Cebu. At JP Morgan Chase, we approach how we do business in the same way that we carry out our corporate responsibility agenda. We recognize that long-term business depends on community success. Long-term business depends on community success. Thus, we listen intently to our partners and then leverage the resources and expertise of our firm to facilitate ongoing dialogue and cooperation between the private sector, the government, and the communities that we serve. We believe our firm has a responsibility and the role we need to play in maintaining the vitality of our communities. And to this end, we renew our commitments each year and our investment in multi-year global initiatives. And these initiatives include a focus on financial health, jobs and skills development, small business expansion, and pertinent to our event today, supporting individuals left most vulnerable by COVID-19 to recover and build more resilient enterprises. I think we all acknowledge that the breadth and impact of this crisis has been without precedent. However, I do note that our tapping the expertise of the Grameen Foundation, the efficient network of our implementation partners on the ground, uh, alongside relevant digital solutions, has not only delivered on immediate relief, but also on more long-term recovery support for our target beneficiaries. And with Grameen's Resilient Life, Resilient Business curriculum, complementing our COVID-19 relief program, we also succeed in enhancing the capacity of our local MFI partners to address members' needs well beyond the pandemic. Recovery in the aftermath of a disaster is achievable when we are equipped with the right financial coping mechanisms that are reinforced by repeated positive behaviors. We're heartened to hear about the program's impact in directly reaching over 3,500 women entrepreneurs and their family members. We're also very proud of our own employees who volunteered to share their expertise through the Bankers Without Borders initiative and to provide skills training and mentorship to our microfinance and fintech partners, who in turn have helped implement our program successfully on the ground. Thank you all for your partnership. In closing, I'd like to re reiterate our firm's strong belief that again, long-term business depends on community success. When there is a concerted effort from all of us to promote inclusive economic recovery and more widely shared prosperity, our society will be better and will recover from all of this. We remain equally committed to the task, actively engaged in collective efforts to respond to challenges that those disproportionately affected by joblessness and poverty may continue to face. And we remain in service of those who continue to be left behind. I think we all look forward to gleaning valuable insights at today's forum and in hearing more about how we can all help build resilient enterprises well beyond COVID-19 and other crises in the future. 
Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Mendoza. Thank you for your inspiring message. And we thank you also for your office's support and organization support. We look forward to more opportunities of collaboration as we continue efforts for greater financial inclusion and women empowerment across the country. And now I invite my colleagues from Grameen Foundation to present the program insights and results of our COVID-19 relief implementation. To start off, I now turn over the floor to Ms. Elsie Delfin, Program Coordinator for COVID-19 Relief, the program overview. Elsie, you may now take the floor. Thank you, Christine. Next slide, please. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elsie, and at this point, the Grameen team will now present the background and results of the year-long COVID-19 relief project. RELIEF stands for Response to Enhance Livelihoods of Individual Entrepreneurs and Families, and its goal was to provide immediate relief assistance and longer-term recovery support to female micro-entrepreneurs in two locations in the Philippines, Metro Manila and Cebu. We were able to accomplish this by partnering with two microfinance institution partners and with the support of key fintech partners. Next slide, please. Around the time the project began last year, there were over 37,000 COVID-19 positive cases across the country, with community quarantines being posed at the national and local levels. These quarantines, while essential for curbing the spread of the virus, pose severe effects on the livelihood of Filipinos. Women, who are more likely to be primary caregivers in their homes, as well as managers of their own businesses, were impacted heavily. To support the relief and recovery of female micro-entrepreneurs, we sought the partnership of MFIs who have traditionally been a source of non-financial support for their clients, providing access to essential information and linkages to additional services. Next slide, please. To respond to the micro-entrepreneurs' immediate needs, COVID-19 relief rolled out its first phase, which was the provision of non-cash relief assistance in the form of SMS vouchers for food and medicine, digital access to merchants for basic needs, and COVID-19 crisis-related health and financial advice. Next slide, please. To roll out phase one of the project, we partnered with the following organizations. One of our MFI partners is Ahon Sahirap Incorporated, a microfinance NGO based in Manila. We also partnered with Rafi Microfinance, based in Cebu City. Representatives from both of these MFIs will also be speaking about their experiences and learnings in today's event. We also partnered with Cello, an organization that develops financial tools to drive financial inclusion. They provided technical and operational support in designing and executing a digital system of relief distribution. We also worked with Beam and Go, a social impact fintech that supports the Filipino migrant worker community and for this project, they connected us with numerous merchants in Metro Manila and Cebu, which allowed our beneficiaries to purchase or order items from stores accessible to them. Lastly, our main partner for our SMS campaign is Engage Spark. Through our partnership with this social enterprise, we were able to send timely health and financial advice and crisis-related support for beneficiaries during Phase 1 and business resilience reminders and strategies during phase two. Next slide, please. At the beginning of the project, Grameen did a pre-selection process and gathered data on our would-be beneficiaries with the help of our partner MFIs. Here you can see that more than half of all beneficiaries are middle-aged or between the ages of 35 to 54 years old. Majority of them belong to households with five to seven members and their businesses range from sari-sari stores, selling ready-to-wear clothing pieces, food vending, and more. To discuss more details about the results of Phase 1 to our beneficiaries, I now give the floor back to Christine. Thank you, Elsie. Next slide, please. In partnership with Beam and Go and Cello, Grameen responded to the most pressing needs of 3,500 micro-entrepreneurs by delivering non-cash assistance from June to October of 2020. There were two types of digital journeys. The first was through SMS. 
Grameen reached 2,767 beneficiaries who owned feature phones. Each one received serial codes worth 5,000 or about 101 US dollars via SMS. The micro entrepreneur presented the codes to the designated grocery stores or partner merchants, along with their MFI IDs in exchange of the vouchers. Upon the receipt of the vouchers, women were empowered to make their own choice in purchasing the items they wished. The other method was through the use of a smartphone. Ramin was able to reach 733 women entrepreneurs. Women were guided on how to download the Valora application developed by Celo and were introduced on how to access the Beam and Go microsite. This was an e-commerce platform that offered groceries, store vouchers, mobile phone load credits, and other items. Upon confirmation of the Valora account, Grameen sent that value of 5,000 and allowed them to purchase the preferred grocery or medical store vouchers or household items and food packages that can be delivered straight to their address. This decreased the risk of having them exposed to the COVID-19 virus. Both methods tested the delivery of immediate support and successfully reaching micro-entrepreneurs in a safe and secure manner. Next slide. We wanted to take a look at the purchasing behavior of the beneficiaries. Most selected items that are considered as basic necessities. 20% or 28% of the respondents also use the relief assistance to support their livelihood. So ibig sabihin po, ay, they invested back their purchases to their store. Majority bought items intended for resale, while some bought raw materials or inputs for their services or business. The products purchased for their business included, but was not limited to the items that we show in the screen. Next slide, please. Part of our goal was to provide quick and actionable advice to the women entrepreneurs. Grameen developed an SMS architecture that focused on providing financial health advice and crisis-related support. We work with Engage Park in providing these personalized messages and a total of 24,488 were sent to beneficiaries and MFI staff. So if you will look at the screen, these topics are divided so that we can address both financial health advice and information regarding sustainability of their business. Next slide, please. To establish long-term recovery and financial resilience, Assistance must be extended to women as they rebuild their businesses and help their families recover. In September of 2020, Grameen started implementing the phase two of the program with its MFI partners to help women future-proof against crisis. We introduced the Resilient Life, Resilient Business Curriculum, or RLRB. It is designed to support a women holistically in addresses the gendered roles and the constant threats of shocks she faces by providing her with the tools to thrive as a micro-entrepreneur in this ever-changing or unstable environment. So what were the implemented programs or activities under this? Grameen designed the RLRB crisis management approach with 14 modules. These were adapted into the local context and made available via the Learn with Grameen application that can be downloadable online via Google App Store. Grameen also conducted a training of trainer sessions with the microfinance institution staff members. These are the frontliners. These are people that they trusted, so they, we wanted to make sure that they are able to communicate and properly cascade the RLRB messages to their members. To get quick information, we still extended or developed a new set of SMS architecture for business tips and actionable advice. And lastly, we were able to engage the JP Morgan staff as volunteers under Grameen's Bankers Without Borders program. The volunteers provided a series of trainings and recommendations to the MFI as a part of the capacity building efforts to the organization. Next slide, please. Here is a quick overview of the topics introduced under the Resilient Life, Resilient Business Curriculum. It is divided into five main stages. The first is in crisis management. It teaches the initial awareness of the situation for the entrepreneur. The second stage is mitigation. Entrepreneurs are taught on the development of the emergency fund. The next is on preparedness. 
we wanted to introduce the importance of creating a security plan and identification of the existing social support services around or within her community. Next is the response. We wanted to teach them to look into the overall business sustainability and improvement of their existing enterprise. And finally, the recovery stage. Here, we wanted to introduce a process of reflection and apply how it can be done to rebuild a new life. Next slide, please. As capacity building efforts, we wanted to show you our numbers in terms of training with our microfinance staff. There were 33 officers who completed the three-day training of trainer sessions wherein they were provided with information on how they are going to mentor the project beneficiaries. We wanted to show how a champion mentor could be someone that they can eventually trust and ask questions or immediate inquiries. The second was the JP Morgan staff volunteers um, supported the Bankers Without Borders program. It is the BWB is a global or skills-based volunteer program supporting the economic development of the world's most poverty-stricken communities. For ASHI, the first group, JP Morgan employees held training sessions on accounting, bookkeeping, cash flow manage management, and existing alternative digital e-commerce platforms, which they can share to their clients. 30 MFI officers were trained for this. They also provided strategic recommendations for the leadership team on how to improve client relations and education support services for their members. On the other hand, the second group of volunteers from JP Morgan helped the RAFI microfinance officers to learn about operational risk management, leadership excellence, and advancement of program and consumer protection. And now I turn over the floor to Kim Panunchal Manbil Yones to talk about the other phase two results and our program insights. Kim, you may now take the floor. Thank you, Christine. Um, hello everyone, good morning and good evening. I'm Kim Panunshalman and I'm here to discuss the phase two results and program insights. Next slide, please. Thank you. In implementing the RLRB modules, the 3,500 beneficiaries were divided into three cohorts. There were 300 mentees who received one-on-one -on -one support from MFI development officers and trust staff to guide them in accessing the modules. And they also received SMS messages as push notifications to remind them about newly released modules. There were 200 independent learners who accessed the modules on their own and received the same SMS messages as push notifications and module reminders. Apart from the mentees and independent learners, uh, were 3,000 beneficiaries under the SMS-only cohort who mainly owned feature or keypad phones and received the contents of the RLRB entirely via SMS in bite-sized text messages. A total of 78,481 messages were sent to the 3,500 benefic beneficiaries under Phase 2. For the 300 mentees that were enrolled in the program, 66% were able to access the modules which is a combination of digital access through the Learn with Gameen application, as well as face-to-face -face inter interventions. As restrictions gradually lifted a few months back, some mentors from our MFI partners supported their mentees through face-to-face -face interventions, leveraging on their weekly center meetings to discuss the contents of the RLRB with their respective mentees, and conducting in-person follow-ups and consultations to increase the rate of access and completion. Although resiliency is a long-term trait that is developed over time, the pre- and post-test results allow us to see a quick short-term view of the learner's knowledge increase on the RLRB topics. On average, 68% of the mentees responded to the pre-test correctly, and after going through the modules, 87% of the mentees answered the same question correctly during the post-test, showing a 19% increase in their average scores. Next slide, please. In accessing the modules, the learners encountered various challenges, mainly relating to their device and internet connectivity, including poor internet connection, the high cost of mobile data, difficulties in installing the Learn with Grameen application and in accessing the modules, as it is a new tool that was introduced to them, the capacity of their mobile devices, which may be incompatible with the application and or lack storage capacity, 
and the issue of time poverty, which will be discussed further in the next slide. To overcome these challenges, our MFI partners employed mitigation measures as stated below. They provided allowances for mobile data. They held face-to-face -face sessions and home visits. They provided step-by-step -step guidance for handheld device support. They lent gadgets and or smartphones to mentees that had trouble accessing and enrolled new mentees to substitute learners that are unable to dedicate time to go through the RLRB curriculum. This will be further discussed by our MFI partners later in the webinar. As a result of the RLRB intervention, a survey on 129 learners revealed that the majority of the respondents had started doing activities to prepare for the event of a disaster or emergency. This includes starting or adding savings to the emergency fund, developing a safety plan, and discussing the importance of saving for an emergency fund and preparing a safety plan for the family or for the business. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now, moving on to the program insights. For the first point, uh, Grameen executed an innovative and safe approach to immediate relief distribution in phase one, overcoming situational challenges posed by COVID-19, including logistics and travel restrictions, by implementing a digital system. This reduced risks present in physically handling aid while ensuring the overall health and safety of each beneficiary and staff member. Grameen coordinated with two fintech companies that have a network of partner grocery and pharmacy merchants, leveraging on a helpline and call center to onboard the beneficiaries and disperse the assistance through digital SMS vouchers in a secure digital platform. The creation of a digital relief system relied heavily on the availability of accurate and updated beneficiary information, such as mobile phone ownership and correct mobile numbers. While it required significant time investment, Updating the client data ensured proper beneficiary onboarding onto the system and facilitated a streamlined process for receiving the digital aid and redeeming the goods that they needed. For the second point, Grameen's interventions required intensive mobile phone usage, whether it be a feature phone or a smartphone, and needs of other family members with whom the beneficiaries share the device, such as the online learning needs of children, communication needs of other salaried or income-earning family members took precedence over the beneficiary's use of the device. Thus, sharing a device within the family limits the female micro-entrepreneur's access to the phone for financial services and training needs. For the third point, majority of the MFI members do not have na a national identification or ID card. As an alternative, Ashi and Rafi's clients relied on their MFI membership IDs to prove their identity when redeeming their non-cash assistance vouchers in store. This is essential during emergencies or relief distribution to ensure that the assistance is claimed by the rightful members that were targeted for the program. While this method worked for this program's MFI beneficiaries, it may prove to be a barrier for future digital relief efforts for beneficiaries in need but have no valid government-issued IDs. Next slide, please. For the fourth point, the gendered roles of women become more prominent during a crisis. Their time and daily routines have to be divided between taking care of vulnerable and at-risk family members, managing the household, and finding ways to pivot their businesses to ensure income. In anticipation of these concerns, Grameen designed learning modules that are relatable, localized, and adapted to the Philippine context for easier digestion and understanding. The RLRB was deployed with a mix of SMS messages, videos, and reflection questions to support knowledge retention and allowed beneficiaries to process their learnings on their own time. There's a social aspect in the learning journey as Grameen recognized that motivation peaks when members exchange insights and share interests. This encouraged other beneficiaries to allocate more time to engage with their MFI mentors. Those who had engagements with a mentor they could trust had higher completion results compared to those who access the modules independently, which now relates to the next point. Uh, Grameen introduced a curriculum which highlighted a crisis management approach. Depending on the experience of the individual, the topics can already be familiar or new to a learner. 
there is no one-size-fits-all approach to adult learning, but incorporating a mentor-mentee relationship better facilitates the micro-entrepreneurs' learnings and application of the RLRB modules to their unique situations or backgrounds. The MFI staff who served as mentors were instrumental in designing the overall intervention as they provided an on-the-ground perspective on the needs and experiences of their clients. Lastly, mobilizing in-person and remote communications as well as organizing activities can be resource intensive. Grameen recognized that the social ties, infrastructure, and the existing network of local partners provide the much needed support to ensure that work plans are accomplished and the program is able to reach the target beneficiaries and maximize impact. MFI community organizers served as a bridge to this new remote system and technology and identifying mentors from this social support group enabled a more relaxed environment for healthy feedback and easy coordination. This blended approach of using digital platforms and mentoring from MFIs builds on the currency of trust. To conclude, the COVID-19 pandemic has deepened gender-based inequalities, putting women micro-entrepreneurs at a disadvantage. As women typically act as both household managers and entrepreneurs, providing them short and long-term support can be the key to resilience of their families and communities in the face of a health crisis such as COVID-19 and other future shocks. Thank you very much for listening. That would be all from my end on the COVID-19 relief program. Um, now we would like to hear from our microfinance partner in Cebu City, and this will be represented by uh, Ms. Joni Joy Dumasig, Client Retention and Engagement Head of Rafi Microfinance Incorporated. I now turn over to you, Ms. Joni. Thank you, Ms. Kim, and good morning, everyone. I'm Joni from Rafi Microfinance. So uh, just a little bit about us. Uh, next slide, please. Rafi Microfinance, we are based in Cebu City. We are under the Rafi or the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated, uh, a family-led foundation of the Aboitis family. Uh, next slide. So our goal in the organization is to, in, to elevate lives. Next, please to elevate lives of our clients, you know, empower them and elevate their lives and that of their families. So we do this, next please, we do this by providing them with both financial and non-financial services. Next slide please. And then, and then we know that in 2020, the, un the unthinkable happened. So all the clients' businesses closed and this really brought about an, a new wave of challenge for us as an MFI institution, especially in how to be able to help out our clients who are themselves in normal times already vulnerable. Next slide, please. So this is why our organization came up with a recovery strategy. We divided them into three phases. We have our immediate response in the first half of last year, and then we moved on to recovery and then to resiliency. Um, just the key highlights that we did uh, during the start of the pandemic, we declared a payment holiday or moratorium for us to be able to help out our clients recover, um, especially we use their funds that they have for emergency purposes during that time. And then after which we still continued to offer our services, we had a relief program and thankfully with Grameen as well, we were able to also provide additional assistance to some of our clients. Moving on to the second half of the year, we implemented the, um, the relief project. Uh, the phase one and then moved on to the phase two in RLRB. In the organization, we also came up with a lot of products. Uh, we had a rehab product, which is we call Sagip Loan, um, whereas providing the clients as well, non-financial services such as trainings, also providing them better access to medical consultation. So we launched virtual consultation programs and at the same time partnered with local doctors for them to be able to have free consultations. As in the organization, we also did our own um, wise spending and also uh, beefed up our plans for digital transformation for us to be able to drive with the times and also the need during that time. So uh, next slide, please. With this, um, we implemented, um, as I've mentioned earlier, these key fi some fi non-financial services such as virtual consultations. We also did education awareness campaigns such as health awareness campaigns such as the Who Now in 
in Bisaya, that is a Bisaya term for washing of hands a campaign. Um, we also put up our Tindahan ni Nanay, which is an online marketplace wherein clients will be able to sell their products. Uh, this is an FB group, um, sell their products online um, despite the mobility restrictions and implemented some um, trainings, community-based trainings, um, using and following health protocols. We were also able to launch our first batch for the scholarship program um, for our for the for the children of our clients. And of course, last but not the least, uh, next, the implementation of our Grameen uh, relief pro COVID relief project. So we were very glad to have been able to partner with Grameen on this initiative. Um, it enabled us to provide immediate relief to our clients, support them in their needs, groceries and medicines. And also this is actually also aligned with our COVID-19 recovery plan, which is to educate our clients, introduce them, especially on the digital financial literacy and business resilience. Next slide, please. So through this program, yeah, next slide. Yeah, through this program, we were able to learn a lot. Um, during the phase one, we've we've um, we've had several challenges, especially that we are asked for clients to avail of the Cello app. Um, a lot of them uh, needed to gain better understanding in using the app. There were also some system glitches during that time. And uh, during the first phase, the validation of the confirmation of clients' contact numbers, since they tend to switch numbers very easily, those also pose some challenges. But um, to address them, we actually enabled um, some on the ground validations. And um, we also provided and asked our staff on the ground to help our clients guide them, visit them on field, especially in how they will be able to, to use the app. And at the same time, uh, close coordination with the Grameen team uh, to resolve system system glitches. In the phase two of the program, we we included here uh, challenges with our mentees, as mentioned earlier by Miss uh, Miss Kim. There are a lot of our clients who had the lack of time uh, to be able to to use the module and to access them. Um, some of the clients also show really no interest at all. So there are also those, especially amongst our independent learners. And um, there are also challenges, especially on internet connection and uh, problems, especially with data. So um, with this, our team also provided, did center visits uh, and then at the same time, and provided them with access. Uh, some of our mentors shared with them the communication allowance that we had. We gave them load to be able to to be able to access uh, to have data so that they can access their modules. And um, we also did constant communication with them as well, monitoring their progress and encouraging them at the same time to really access their modules during this time. And uh, next slide, please. So with this, we are able and we look forward to this um, insights that we have. Um, we see that it would also be nice to be able for, our, for us to encourage our clients to really finish the modules. Uh, we feel that it would be good to divide the relief in tranches. So there will be a first phase uh, relief. And then after that, they will have to undergo the RLRB and then the next phase of the relief. So just as what 4Ps usually do, so the clients will have this uh, motivation to really finish the modules. Um, it's also good to incentivize them. So this is what we did for our independent learners. We recognized top learners, gave them 50 pesos load so that they will be encouraged to really finish their modules on a per week basis. Um, during the end of the program, we also provided certificate of completions to all of the completers and also also gave an additional prize to top top three learners, and um, we also see that it is very it is very good to follow up with the learners. Uh, they really want they really need constant follow up, especially if they have some challenges in accessing the module or some challenges in understanding the module. In fairness to the RLRB, it's very much understandable. Clients love that the videos are done. And um, it would be still nice to have some follow throughs with them. A provision of internet access would also be really good. And um, for the MFIs to go out of their way to provide this access to them, it would also be uh, very helpful for the clients. Um, clients also tend to choose the topics that they can most relate to. In our case, in RAFI, MFI, crisis management, emergency funds, and support networks were the top three topics that our clients loved. 
um, for the sustainability plans that we have, um, we would like that to really include the RLRB module to our list of our client trainings uh, to also later on explore the use of digital learning platforms um, in our future trainings to our clients and supplement their learnings on digital and literacy and financial or business resilience through our other other awareness and non-financial services that we have. And um, next slide, and this is already my last slide. In Rafi Microfinance, we always say this, mauswagon ka, which means to say, be be progressive, daghang salamat ug mauswagon ka. And here in Rafi MFI, walang iwanan. That's it from our end. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joni. And now we turn over the floor to Ms. Desiree Goto for her presentation on Ahon Sa Hirap. Ms. Desiree is the Plans and Programs Department Head of Ahon Sa Hirap Incorporated. Ms. Des, you now have the floor. Now, thank you very much, Ms. Kirstine. And good morning to all of you. Again, I'm Desiree Silosa Goto, and I'm the Department Head in charge of the Plans and Programs under Ahon Sa Hirap Incorporated, a microfinance NGO. Our next slide, please. And before I proceed with my presentation pertaining to our experiences with this uh, program, I would like to give you some background about our institution. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. As you can see our vision uh, statement, we are working with marginalized families for social transformation and prosperity. And uh, through microfinance, our mission, we are able to provide a holistic approach for total human and environmental development. Our area of coverage are in Western Visayas and Calabarzon and few in uh, National Capital Region in NCR. And uh, as you can see, the core values of Ahon Si Hirap, that is the acronym of Ahon Sa Hirap Incorporated. So it stands accountability, the social commitment, the human dignity, and integrity. By the way, we are in 30 years of service when we registered in STC. Yeah. Next slide, please. And pertaining to our products and services, we offer micro loans, micro savings, and micro insurances. This micro insurance in partnership with the registered insurance company here. And aside from the financial, we offer also the non-financial services like um, livelihood trainings. Uh, this is in partnership also with the uh, Spark Ascenti Pool. And we also have the eye operation, uh, the dental and medical mission with the great doctors here with the same advocacy like us. And uh, to name of you, so many trainings and capacity building given by our training department. Next slide, please. How has COVID-19 affected ASHI? Definitely, we suspended our collection and center meeting that time due to public transformation, transportation bridge resist during the lockdown. And when the lockdown was lifted, it was scarce and very expensive on our part. As you can see, the fare on the tricycle and the jeep uh, get uh, increased during those times. And many of the staff could not go home, so they stayed in the branch office to do um, follow-up communication to our members just to check on their current situation. And uh, you know that in 2020, we are all threatened, so paranoia set in communities where we work and even the staff. But then we are still alive and we are coping. Ending the year in 2020 was a big loss. Definitely, we are negative in bottom line. So, next, please. Next slide, please. In terms of our response to the pandemic, we maximize the use of this digital conferencing, not like what we are using right now, and put to good use, providing unbridled communication and teaching webinars. This was the time that our top management, the our HR, and even the branch managers are using this uh, platform thus just to check the, uh, uh, the condition of the members and even the staff. 
Others are uh, work from home, but majority of our staff are stayed in the office. Uh, just to check na the members' condition using the SMS uh, or the uh, different platform like Messenger or cell phone, just to check the situation. The staff discovered many ways just to meet up with members without transgressing the law. In fact, uh, while they are communicating, they will meet somewhere in the boundaries or anywhere because of the restriction of the transportation just to do the normal transaction, submission of loan proposal, um, uh, withdrawal of savings, and the normal transaction in the center meeting. We also have the moratorium on loan payments. We suspended it. Then we offered recovery loans for our members. Though there's a suspension, most members insisted on handing their payments even though we have no center meeting and without no collection. And uh, our, during that time and until now, our top priority is the staff protection. You know, our top management really gave us full benefit, even no deduction, SSS, PLL, during two months' time in April and in uh, March. So no downsizing in, in ASHI. And still... The benefits were given to us, vitamins, antiseptics, everything, the protection, just for us to be free from COVID. And until now, we are sold out funders with lower interest rate. The next slide, please. Next slide. In terms of our engagement with Grameen, we are very thankful to you guys, you know that. Because not only you provided non-cash relief to the to our ASHI members via SMS or this uh, Valora application or digital app, you also provided us additional support of training and mentoring not only these NCR development officers but even the middle managers in ASHI in partnership with the BWB and just for the rollout of this resilient life resilient business and even what you are mentioning are a while ago on terms of the uh, accounting, the cash, um, how are we going to do this, uh, the cash inventory and the digital apps. So we are very thankful to you guys. Next slide, please. On terms of our experiences, you can see the pictures. There were a big smiles on the face of our 2,149 selected members. Though there are 1,623 are using the SMS just to claim their goods at the supermarket. And 526 used for sale or the digital app, the Balora application. And also the blessing was used 83% for the basic commodities, like uh, what you are mentioning, canned goods, bread, noodles, rice, and 17% uh, 17, 17 used to increase the inventory for their small store. These were for Marikina. And a generic, uh, this part of the uh, non-cash relief, is a drugstore, they put medicines and vitamins. Next slide. Our difficulties during those times, 55% uh, of our members having problem on the downloading of the application. Really, they have a limited knowledge on this digital world. So it's very essential for us to teach them how to do it. And an issue of the data connectivity really is a problem signals would come and go even though this is an NCR still there are portion of uh, areas have no have a problem on data connectivity and uh, around three to four follow ups coming from the staff of ASHI needs just to uh, check if the members accepted the uh, groceries or the SMS and being part of the program and an important learning and we found out that this gadget or this, this device was family owned, not as um, individual ownership. 
it meant that it passed on from one family. Uh, let's say, for example, if the spouse are working, so there's a problem in terms of the um, communication. So a different SIM will be used probably from the children or from the neighbors. So there was a need to encourage and mentor members who were tech averse. So that's our difficulties. Next slide. And these were the photos of our beneficiaries. Yeah, thank you. Next slide. And on terms of our learning and rolling out the self program, really an orientation is a must. This is a really a requirement on how are we going to use this uh, digital application. There's the need of the demonstration from the staff when they are attending the center meeting during face-to-face. -face. They need to do the step-by-step step -step process for them to finish the transaction. And the reliability of internet connection is crucial because of this is a digital adult learning. That's why internet is very important. And the regular follow-ups really is needed so to make this program successful. Next slide. And that was the photos. The yellow is our staff meal and they are doing the digital learning from the centers and even on home visit. Next slide. Our priorities for this year, um, we will need to mentor our ASHI members on financial literacy. This is part of the training called the curriculum. And uh, because very essential nowadays in terms of the digitalization, we are really moving and we are serious to move our uh, ASHI into digitalization. And eventually, if we are going to find out a good partner wherein it's very economical, uh, we will move to cashless collection because right now our disbursement is uh, um, through Palawan, through banks, but the collection is still manual. We're going to the center meeting just to do the transaction if there is no restriction. And also, right now, we are upgrading our system just to fit for the microfinance sector, not the banking sector. And also, we need to focus our um, recovery and sustainability. As I mentioned, we are negative in bottom line in 2020. That's why we need really to work harder just to do the recovery also for the members level. How are they going to be resilient? That's why this program is very timely. And next slide, please. And what we did, our next step to make this program sustainable. So our team, the our HR team, the training team integrate these working modules to our ASHIS curriculum. For us, not only the 2,149 members will be benefited from this program, but the whole 91,000 and counting of our ASHI members. So right now, our membership is 91,252. Imagine of 2,149 alone. So that is our uh, goal. So for them to learn also these RLRD modules. So we are thankful to you guys and this opportunity for us speaking to this uh, platform. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Ms. Des, and also to Ms. Joni. Both of your teams support flexibility and creativity were instrumental in achieving our project's goals. Now that we've heard from our MFI partners and from the Grameen program team, we now open the floor to questions from the audience. Feel free to use the chat or the Q&A function, which can be found at the bottom part of the Zoom screen to ask questions about the project, our activities, experiences, and insights. So we do see one question about the presentation so after this um, online learning event, there will be an email to all the registered participants sharing 
the recording of today's session, which can be used as reference for um, the speakers and all the insights shared during this event. So our MFI partners are still here along with the grooming program team. If you have any questions about the different aspects of the project from phase one, the release of their leaf assistance, the rollout of RLRB, the bankers without borders engagement, and even the SMS campaign. Okay, uh, so I'll read one question that we received. So how did the women members or the micro entrepreneurs react to the new digital apps being introduced to them for both phase one and phase two? So it was mentioned by both MFI partners that there were some clients who were very new to the tech space. So how did they react? And did they encounter any difficulties using and adapting to the technology? So maybe it would be better for us to hear from um, our MFI partners. Uh, maybe uh, Ms. Joni can start and Ms. Des can also share a bit. Yes, for us, actually, that's, that's, that has really been one of the problems that we initially encountered. So what we did is um, in the first phase, phase one, there were two options, either to enroll them to an SMS or the Cello cohort, which is the Valora app. Um, Grameen asked us to at least enroll 200 out of the 1,000 plus clients that we have. So what we did, um, we asked that the, those that are a little bit younger and those who have access to smartphones will be the ones who will have this access. So I think initially um, 50 years old or below, if, I'm not, if I remember it correctly, so we chose them. But during this time, even those that are around 30 years old, 20 to 30, 40 years old, um, still had some difficulty. So what we did is to switch them back to claim through the SMS vouchers. Um, nevertheless, we still had some clients because due not to the pandemic, um, they were able to already shift. Um, they have some of the clients that we had already used Gcash, Paymaya. So uh, that kind of knowledge enabled them to easily adapt to the Valora app. Um, during the phase two, um, what we did is that to really um, the, in the in the first few weeks, I think first few months that there were a lot of problems encountered, our staff from our from the main office really visited them in their centers and provided for the the devices, um, gave them internet access during that time, and helped them to set up and access their accounts um, in this in in the platform. So when we when we did select though um, from the phase one to RLRB, we use those that are already in the cello cohort uh, to to be the ones to be enrolled to the RLRB. So at least at that at that point we have a, a somehow an idea that they are they are able to access this. They have cell phones, uh, they have smartphones, um, they are a little bit more knowledgeable on the digital space. So but that but the main, but the, I think one of the things that we really did that helped them out is to really visit them. Some of our staff really went there and and demoed how to access the modules. So that's from our end. Po. Thank you. Yeah, for Ashi, as I mentioned earlier, and of course, they have difficulty and have problem in terms of this digital uh, application. They would like to do on SMS this 2149. But then, due to the uh, constant um, follow-ups and motivation from this app, from our mentors, so th these, they are motivated to do this. And the true demonstration and the assistance coming from Remin, then they knew how to do it. So really, um, in, in each, if there is a new program, first, first thing is they are resistant to change because they want cash. But mm. if you are going to uh, educate and to continue explain, explaining with them the value because of this pandemic and the good thing of uh, the digital application wherein if you, uh, if you knew how to do it, then the goods will be delivered on your doorstep. So constant communication and explanation is needed. So I think that's it. 
So thank you so much for sharing those, uh, Ms. Joni and Ms. Des. So we're actually very grateful for the support of the MFIs on the ground in um, propagating or in spreading the news and in orienting the beneficiaries about the digital apps. So they used uh, Messenger, they used calls and texts. They also used uh, limited face-to-face -face sessions to um, support the beneficiaries. And at the same time, we're also grateful for our fintech partners. So Cello and Beam and Go, who were also able to provide um, resources like YouTube videos on how to use the app, there were brochures that were already also sent out. So all of these different um, efforts uh, help so that um, we can reduce the resistance to the, um, these digital technologies and hopefully support the start of their um, digital transformation. So thank you so much. Uh, another question that we received was, <clears throat> of the 78,000 plus SMS messages sent, how many or what's the percentage of those who received the messages uh, reacted or replied to the messages? So uh, I can also speak about this one. So um, with our SMS campaign for both phase one and phase two, it was actually a one-way SMS message that we sent to all 3,500 beneficiaries. So because um, we employed uh, a sender ID specific to the MFI, so, for example, if I'm a beneficiary from Ashi, I would be receiving these messages. Parang the name would be Ashi, and it will be the same case for Rafi. I will be receiving these messages from a, a name of Rafi, and so it is not a mobile number that they can respond to. But this has also this SMS architecture is something that has been employed by Grameen also in previous projects, and um, uh, we did see the effect of the. Uh, SMS messages in sending these bite-sized RRB uh, topics and reminders to the beneficiaries from before. So hopefully that answers the question. So it wasn't uh, a two-way communication, but only for the SMS campaign. There was a lot of coordination on uh, the RLRB topics and all of the assistance of the non-cash relief assistance. So from surveys, 85% uh, said that they are happy about the SMS messages that they received. And then 78% said that it helped them. So I hope um, that answers the question. So there's also um, a question on the chat box. So we heard in the video about the role of the mentors. Can you please elaborate why the mentors were important and how they felt about being a mentor? So why were they motivated to support in addition to their duties to be mentors? So it was uh, shown in the impact video uh, I think um, one or two MFI mentors spoke, and actually Ms. Des and Ms. Joni also attended our TOT session. So uh, the question is, um, of course, this is, this is an addition to their already um, heavy workload. So what was the motivation of our mentors in reaching out to their beneficiaries? Maybe for this one, uh, Ms. Des, would you be able yeah. to start? Actually, Part of the uh, task of the development officers in ASHI is having a social development program, wherein in this social development program, our staff will uh, teach them new things. And timely, this RLRB and this digital uh, learning is being part and integrated as the social development program. So this is not an additional task. Actually, um, this is being uh, supplement, those should be the topic for the SDP, then replaced by this RLRB. So that's why, and also, um, if, if you, the, the staff are inspired and they are motivated because this is part of the mission, they are going to help this bottom poor, and the capacity building is really a necessity and really a need for the members to be resilient. That's why there are buy-in on this concept. That's why it continues on doing that way. Thank you. Yeah, for our case in Rafi, um, basically the team who were mentors were from our team here in the client retention and engagement team. Um, we in it's uh, we are based in the main office, so our task is to really implement 
our non-financial services to the clients and this includes the trainings so although we are not the branch staff um, we are the ones who were there to do the mentor mentoring sessions for this one since this is also just similar to ashi this is one of the key functions as well of the of the team to be able to provide these trainings and um, for me it's very important that the mentors are there because number one they are the ones who will really ensure that clients access the modules um, if we leave them to themselves actually to be honest it's it's not something that they uh, they immediately in default in default would like to do even despite having mentors we still had challenges um, with some of the mentees to even complete their complete their module so in the in the span of the the phase two project i think we did um twice if i'm not mistaken once or twice uh, we had to update the list of mentees because there are really some of those mentees that are not willing to be part of the of the mentoring of the mentorship group um and we saw this in the independent learners um in the independent learners we're in quite a very few from our end despite having already incentivizing them recognizing those who are um who are uh, completers um, the innate ability the innate desire to really learn i think it's quite understandable because um in the end of our clients uh, parang going to school is not that much of a priority at that time but once they were able to really experience the module i think the motivation kicked in as well we did have some few clients who were really in, in their testimonies they really love to learn and for them it's it was an answered prayer but there are also those who initially were hesitant but when the mentors were continuously following them up and then also providing them with guidance asking them questions um, allowing them to somehow digest what they have learned i think that this that also motivated them so for the mentors um i i for one was also a mentor i think uh, i would say that it's also nice to be able to help out our clients because um to allow them to learn these things some of them actually looked for this and um having this this access to the module really helped them a lot especially the way they perceive crisis and the way they ought to prepare for the emergencies that are also to come that's it from us thank you Okay, thank you, Ms. Joni and Ms. Des. So um, in this project, we really appreciated the efforts of all the mentors under the Rafi and Ashi team who really did a great job of deepening the learning. So although we introduced um, these topics through the RLRB modules and are helping them in the long term adapt to digital tools, of course, um, nothing beats like a heart-to-heart -heart session with a mentor or um, that relationship that is built on trust with someone that you, and there's a sense that, okay, someone is always following up with me. Someone must really care about their development and their business. Okay, so um, there, there's another question through Q&A. So how many mentees did each mentor handle? And did the women entrepreneurs also share their learnings as a group? And if they did, um, how did they do it during the height of community quarantine restrictions? So what digital medium? So the number of mentees that each mentor handled, I think, differed uh, between Rafi and Ashi. So perhaps we can just give um, an estimate for Rafi and Ashi. And um, maybe can you please give more details on how they communicated with their mentees despite all of the restrictions um, on travel? Um, yeah. Uh, for us in Rafi, we had around seven to ten men mentees um, regular for for those who had regular load. We had seven to ten, and then what we did during this time um, at the height of the community quarantine, where we are still not able to go on field, um, we established uh, group chats. So um, that's where we asked. Uh, initially, the mentors communicated through their phone numbers and then ask them what's their FB group and then add them onto that particular group. So this there this is where the reminders came in. And um, in terms in our end, from our end in Rafi, we were really not able to provide this kind of like sharing as a mentor group because our mentees were from different areas. So what we did is that during the time where restrictions here in Cebu already uh, somehow loosened, so we were able to do 
um, filled limited um, center meeting visits. So actually, we had like around five people come into the center meeting, and then that's where we did the um, the the mentoring so they access the platform and then pro we provided them with to those who have no digital devices we provided we lent some to them and then there's the they're the ones who access this during the during the whole duration of the center meeting for ashi at least per mentor we have seven to ten also same with uh, rapi and two things that we did one is uh to call the uh, members and uh, also we have all the uh, group chat so they have the group chat for this uh, mentees mentors just for them to uh, check and to update what's uh, happening and uh, also we because we have a center meeting and a staggered, a staggered center meeting so our staff uh, goes to the meeting and meet with this uh, mentees. So that's the time that they're going to do the deepening on how are going to understand more in terms of this module. So three. Call, then group chat, then face-to-face -face through center meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Miss Joni and Miss Des. So there were times that sometimes there, the restrictions in Cebu might not be the same with Metro Manila and vice versa. So we really relied on close coordination with both MFIs in identifying the next steps. And thank you for sharing the ways that you um, reached out to your mentees. And we do have time for one final question um, on the chat box. So um, this is a question from the Social Housing Finance Corporation. Um, at SHFC, we also aim to provide the member beneficiaries of the homeowners associations under our projects with micro-enterprise trainings to help them, especially in this time of pandemic. However, we would like to ask if you have already provided a group enterprise training to a community association, and if yes, how did you help the community sustain the business? Okay. Uh, Christine, would you like to take that? Thanks, Elsie. In Grameen Foundation, we do have a lot of um, capacity building efforts, and sometimes we customize this or um, adapt depending on the existing um, status of the organization. So actually, uh, currently in the Philippines, we are supporting both the financial sector and the agriculture sector. So we are supporting um, cooperatives, social enterprises, and even um, microfinance institutions and other NGOs. Um, so the, usually the first step on this um, support provision is to make an assessment and a market and gaps analysis on the existing organization to see also what are the tools and what are the um, relevant topics and activities that we can offer. So it is a collaboration between the organization. And if you would like to most likely more, know more about um, this information, I'm happy to provide and lead you to direct contacts um, after this call. So I'll be sharing also my email address and our website information at, uh, towards the end. Okay, uh, thank you, Christine. Thank you so much to our um, MFI speakers who shared their insights. Thank you to all those who um, typed in their questions. Uh, if you have uh, further questions or um, clarifications, feel free to reach out to us. Um, right now, I will give uh, the floor back to Christine to give her closing remarks to formally close our knowledge sharing event. Thank you so much, Elsie. And I hope each of you learned something new from our session today. I think we all live in very interesting and challenging times, but if we continue to face um, as we continue to face these unique barriers and challenges, both at the health, finance, and business aspect, uh, we can work together and recognize our different strengths. And slowly, we can overcome these different challenges. Uh, as we end, I'd like to thank, of course, our different partners and um, speakers that participated in this session. A special thanks goes to our guests, Mr. Carlo Mendoza of J.P. Morgan, Ms. Desiree Goto of Ahon Sahirap Incorporated, and Ms. Joni Joy Dumasic of Rafi Microfinance. And as we end the session, I invite you to join us, of course, in our mission. If you're interested in partnering with us, feel free to reach us via email. Um, as you can see in my screen now, 
in our screen now is my email address, or you can visit our website, uh, www.grameenfoundation.org. We're currently present in the Philippines, but we also support different programs within Asia, such as Timor-Leste, Indonesia, Myanmar. We do have an office in, in, in India, and we have presence in Africa, in Colombia, and our main headquarters is based in Washington, D.C. Our efforts are the, uh, our efforts are focused into different themes, such as financial inclusion, um, health, as well as leveraging on community agents and mobile agriculture. So we hope that through the use of technology and partnerships, we can continue to work towards economic women empowerment and financial resilience, leveraging on this transformational use of technology. And have a great rest of your day and evening for those who are joining abroad. And thank you everyone for participating in this session. Goodbye and have a good day. Goodbye, thank you.